Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 72. This episode is Brian A. Prince, who is awesome. He and I talked about, he's actually, quite possibly, the tallest practitioner of parkour. And I don't mean like the office version of parkour. I mean like legit jumping across buildings, doing flips and stuff. And he's doing this at like almost seven feet tall, which is insane. This dude is super talented. And that, as well as his art, which is amazing. And you can see him most recently in uh, in The Predator. He plays the Predator, guys. Like, this is craziness. You know how I'm into aliens. And to tackle a franchise like The Predator is pretty big. It's pretty big. So we talked about that. Um, we talked about his parkour, how long he's been training. Um, a bunch of stuff into that, which was super fascinating. Uh, and then we talk about how he's actually a trained artist. Um, he's working on a graphic novel, which, you know, be on the lookout for that. Uh, we talk about how he got into acting. We talk about working on a stunt crew. For movies, how he got involved in that. Uh, and of course, we covered The Predator. And what's really fascinating is how The Predator soup is put together in a very similar way that the uh, Star Wars creatures are put together. Um, really, really cool stuff. So uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. Brian's a really great dude. So without further ado, let's get to the much cooler Brian uh, with the interesting podcast episode number 72 with Brian A. Prince. Theme song time. Good. Got laundry done, so well done. You know, it's a step Good. forward. <laughs> I know, right? It was that one thing I needed to get done today to make it feel like, okay, cool. Like today is yeah. started. <laughs> I'm the same yeah. way. I have like a daily to do list on my phone where I was like, I have to oh look, <sighs> get up, check. Oh dude. Yeah, yeah that is absolutely my life as well. <laughs> yeah. It's also yeah. a thing where if it's not on the list, it is not getting done. Like one hundred percent. Yeah, like I feel like I recently hit that level of adulthood where if I don't put everything into my calendar, it just gets forgotten immediately. Yep. 100%. Uh, especially with this like last two weeks, it's been it's been a crazy time. <laughs> sure, I believe so, it. Z- yeah. zero, zero to a hundred, you know, big movies coming out and whatnot. <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome though, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank where, you. Where are you? So you're you're not in Atlanta at the moment. No, I'm in Vancouver right now. Um, again, oh. <laughs> ironically, um, nothing big, nothing, nothing work. Just um, decided to come up here after the premiere and hang out with some friends. Right uh, on. Yeah, I've never been to Vancouver. What is it like? Oh, it's beautiful. Um, it's cloudy and raining a lot in the winter, mm-hmm. uh, in like in like the not summer times of the year. Um, but even then, it's still really pretty. It's like right up against the mountains. Oh, and so like if it's not too cloudy, like if it's not foggy, hazy, like you can just see the mountains all of the time, and it's really nice. Um, That's cool. And yeah, it's like extremely multicultural city, so you can find like food and people from pretty much anywhere. Really? Yep. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, but yeah, I love it here. I uh, my a close friend of mine, well, I have a bunch of close friends up here, and and one of them owns the. Uh, the parkour gym up here oh, sweet. and i uh so i just come up here sometimes and hang out with those guys and just jump around and talk about life and also i'm working on a a personal project right now I'm trying to uh, write and draw a graphic novel and i just tend to get a lot of work done when i'm here so Dude. i figured it'd be a good write-off <laughs> that is awesome i've i've seen your art and it is amazing Dude, <laughs> oh, thanks i can't draw a stick figure so anyone that can draw at all it's basically magic to me so nice. well done <laughs> well you. done did you thanks. did you i'm assuming you drew from a kid yeah yeah um i don't yeah I, no totally did you want to like i guess save that for the podcast or, or are we recording or <laughs> <laughs> who says we're not already oh man <laughs> oh, ho, ho. welcome i guess <laughs> Take back all that other stuff I said about yeah. those people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, this show, this show is very much like, obviously it's going to get edited around, 
but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it's very much like an informal conversation. Oh, it's, that's the best. <laughs> you'll learn. This is not an interview, my friend. It is just a chat. It's a good time. Oh, that is oh, awesome. Well, I'm, I'm in. I used to um, run a podcast like that. It was a, uh, it was a, I did a parkour podcast. I did like five episodes. Oh, sweet. And, um, that was like the whole point. It was just like, let's just talk about stuff. And then like, it was really fun. I just like, it got away from me. Dude, it's um, the way to go. Yeah. It's, it's the only way to do it. I, I've noticed people, I don't know, I feel like people enjoy uh, listening to a conversation more than like just a series of questions or explanations. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And just conversation is just, that's where the real connection is. You know, it's two people talking as opposed to like, in my experience in interview, it's very much like I have a question. I ask the question, you answer the question and then it just kind of dies off. And I was like, nobody wants to hear that. Like just talk, right. talk yeah. as people, you know? Absolutely. No, 100% agree with you. Well, yeah. shoot, man. Oh, cool. Let's let's keep going then. Um, yeah. What, yeah, you you just asked me about the... Um, you draw uh, very yeah, well. Yeah, I draw. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I've been drawing since I was a kid. Um, since I don't even remember. Just since I was a kid. And uh, I was drew in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, drawing kind of kept me paying attention. Smart. Uh, yeah, over the, over the last, like... <laughs> year I've, I've slowly realized that i have like adhd and Same. i always have <laughs> and then like it was like it was a funny surprise actually because it was um it was a podcast by uh the woman who does that youtube channel how to adhd oh yeah i know it wasn't a podcast it was a ted talk sorry mm-hmm. it was a ted talk of, of her talking about it and it just like scrolled onto my youtube like play next kind of thing nice and i was just like She's just describing how everyone feels. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, no. And then, and then I started, like, really researching it. And then, like, I was like, this all makes so much sense. Like, that's why everything was so difficult. And then I, like, talked to my mom about it. She's like, well, I have it. And I was like, mom. like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. And so, um, but either way, like, uh, digress. Like, yeah, so when I was a kid in school, I just drew all the time. And that just kept me... Um, you know, like I could focus on the art, but then my brain would be hearing what the teacher would say. And so it kind of got me through a lot of my classes, my lecture based classes. Um, and so when I got to the end of high school, um, I, you know, I wasn't too great at basketball. I didn't, I could have been good. It's just, I don't know. I was a very fixed mindset kid, mm-hmm. um, you know, fixed mindset versus growth mindset. So I was oh, like, yeah. I was good at the things I was good at, and I was bad at everything else. Yeah, <laughs> and, same, um, same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and a lot of people feel that way, you know. And it's one of those things I want more people to realize that that's just not how it is. Um, and mm-hmm. for me, the the biggest thing for that was parkour. Um, so, like, I went to art school, but even then, like, I was still like, okay, I can do these things, but I can't do those things. Like, I can't paint. I can't do realistically rendered stuff even though i got decent at it um with like the the fine art courses that i took um but around that same time i started doing parkour in college um it was a very like rebellious 19 year old i was like i'm gonna grow up my hair and wear whatever i want and <laughs> there you go I'm like, yeah i'm gonna go to like anime conventions and cosplay and hell to, like, yeah just do what i want to do you know and um and and then part of that was like I, I longboarded a lot, actually made my own longboards for a bit. Um, I still have one in my trunk. Yep. Yeah. I just I just looked up online like it was, it was the first one was for a cosplay character, actually. Dude, um, which one? Um, it was a uh, character, Matthew from Eureka seven. Yeah. Um, dude. Cause I, I was like, Hey, black guy in anime. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, I'm already I halfway gotta, there. <laughs> yeah. I'm halfway there. I, gotta, I just gotta grow up my hair and, and, and buy those clothes. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, in the show, they have these, uh, what they call them, ref boards and they're like air surfboards. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to make one, uh, as a prop. And then I was like, Oh, well, what if I think a friend was like, what if it was actually a skateboard? And I'm like, Oh, you can't make a skateboard. And then I went online. <laughs> I was like, Oh, you can. And so I made, I made a longboard. I still have that one actually in my closet somewhere. What? And it works. My, my, oh yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Like, Dude. It's, it's, it's a great skateboard. Um, I just stopped using it cause I didn't want to like, it looks so nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Like, and then after that, I just kept, I, I made a few more, uh, there's one in my trunk that I still use the most, and it has like a handle in it. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't even know. But at the time, like I, I went to Kennesaw State University outside of Atlanta, and Sweet. I um, 
I was like the longboarding tall guy. And so, <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, I did that, but yeah, so I, so I started doing parkour, uh, the first summer vacation, uh, mm-hmm. of my college. So that was like 2008. And, um, what got me into it was it was like before Ninja Warrior was like the big thing it is now. Um, mm-hmm. and they just showed the Japanese one on oh, yeah. G4. Yeah. I was watching that and I remember they had like a few Americans go over to Japan and compete. And, um, it was like Brian Orozco, Levi Muenberg, Brett Sims, and they were uh, like parkour athletes. And I was like, Oh, that's like a thing. And then like, I, I was like, I remember that from Casino Royale, but I didn't think it was like a right. thing. <laughs> and so I started like getting it, like going online, looking at, forums and looking at videos and i was like oh this is so cool i want to do this but i just was like like there is that 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 negative feeling that was like oh i can't do that that's not something i can do um sure. and then i was just like mm, i don't care i'm gonna do it anyway and so i just <laughs> like like that was a huge moment like looking back that kind of was like i think the 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 pivotal kind of like jenga block that i pulled out that really just set everything else into motion um yeah. because it was like one of the first moments i just like i really didn't care about what everyone else wanted me to do i just did something i wanted to do right and so i started doing it and it was really hard um <laughs> and i and i and i tell this to people today like you will never be as sore as you are after like your first day or two of doing parkour for the first time because you just you activate it all of these muscles, these tiny core muscles and tiny leg muscles that you never used before. And, uh, and it's awesome. But, and so I, I, I just kept doing it. And, and over the years, it's funny cause like friends would, or people I'd meet at like get togethers and be like, I don't know if you should be doing this cause you're so tall. And I was just like, shut up. Like, I'm going <laughs> to do it anyway. And so I, I kept, I kept training. Um, and then I just started getting the hang of it. And then like, and then I kind of became an anomaly at it where people were like, you're, you know, I'm 6'10 and 225 pounds. And I can like front flip over things and land lighter than other people that are half my weight. <laughs> um, and yeah, it just kind of blows people away. But like, I never looked at it like that. I was just always like, man, I gotta be better at these things. And I gotta like, like, I've never let my height be an excuse for me. Um, sure. I mean, like maybe earlier, but like, especially now, like if I'm doing a challenge with some other guys and like, it's a very height disadvantaged challenge, like like a hanging thing or mm-hmm. or a climbing thing. And like someone will be like, oh, you know, it's cool. Like, like if you can't get it because, you know, your height. And I'm like, no, shut up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to figure out a way to, to do it. It's going to be different and it's going to be weird, but I'll figure it out. And like that, like that mindset really kind of just helped me out a lot. Because and so kind of like I was saying earlier, like before parkour, I was just like, you know, these are the things I'm good at. These are the things I'm bad at. And then in doing parkour, I learned like, no, I can, I can overcome obstacles. I can learn how to do things. I can figure out problems. And that, that kind of became a big deal for me because at like, once that kind of clicked, I stopped looking at things at, in, in just as like a wall. I mean, it sounds really cliche, but <laughs> there's like, a lot of puns here. You're setting me up for. Yeah. Brian. <laughs> yeah. Right. I know. <laughs> Getting sounds... over obstacles, things become a wall. <laughs> Dude, it, it's really funny <laughs> with parkour people because we'll just like we we will philosophically ramble about how much parkour impacts our our, our everyday life, but it's so true. Yeah, oh, dude. <laughs> you know, like like when I look at a wall now, I'm like, oh, how do I get over this? And so, like, right. same thing with like everyday problems. If like if something in my car breaks, I'm like, okay, how do I fix this? Instead of like, oh no, it's broken. Like I can't. I I won't give up on a problem. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. So that like that you know. I, did parkour for 10 years now like may this year was my 10 year wow. like anniversary of doing parkour which is crazy because it's you know it's been a lot of ups and downs there's been a lot of like there's been months where i just didn't train you know sure. there's been months where i trained every day um and it's i'm finally at a point with it where like i just love doing it like i don't really strive to learn more things mm-hmm. in terms of like techniques like I'm more of like a running, jumping, climbing kind of mover, not like a flip twist kind of mover. Sure. But um, and so a lot of people are like, oh, you should learn, you know, these moves. I'm like, oh, no, I don't really want to. Like, I just yeah. I like the <laughs> the move set that I have, and I want to explore like more challenges with the move set that I have, and and more places. But but I'm finally at a point where I just like, I just love doing it. Like while I'm doing parkour, I'm probably like the happiest version of myself. Um. And that's it's just nice having something like that where I know like while I'm doing this thing, 
you know, I can like, I'll be in a good mood. And then that, that inadvertently makes me take care of myself because as I, I'm 29 now and as I get older, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I can't just jump into a training session. I have to warm up for 15 minutes and I have to warm up <laughs> new specific motor, like muscle groups. And then I have to cool down and I have to stretch and roll out. And like, like to the point where somebody younger asked me like, oh, how did you come up with like your warm up and cool down routine? And I was just like, um, just not having it and then things hurting. And then, <laughs> and then I was like, I don't like when these things hurt. How do they not hurt? So uh, sure. Yeah. Dude, that's yeah. nuts. I remember I watched a ton of parkour videos in high school and they were like urban ninja or something like that just a guy in like a gi flipping yeah around and set, I remember that set one. to like system of a down or something. yeah <laughs> yeah i remember I was that like one. look at this and of course i was like all right i'm gonna get all my friends together we're gonna try this parkour stuff and we like assigned each other stuff we're like all right you're jumping off of stuff you're gonna run along the walls you're gonna flip on a trampoline because that counts <laughs> yeah. we did one time where because I've seen your parkour videos and they're amazing. It's like you're oh, floating you. across stuff. <laughs> yeah. We did thank one you. time where we had two cars set up, and my younger brother, like, he got like too much speed. You don't move when you're ru- you're like running. You put your hands down and you just kind of like kind of jump over it. Just boop, never yeah. losing momentum. Yeah. Well, obviously none of us knew what we were doing. So my brother <laughs> got too much speed and jumped off and like made an arc. I saw him fly for a few seconds. And then he Jeez. landed without putting his hands forward and just mm. cracked his head on the other door. And he, oh. <laughs> I mean, to get the side view of it was kind of amazing. You're just, yeah, you're just seeing <laughs> like, like a torpedo and then just boop, and he dented the car with his forehead. He was fine. Oh, man. But, <laughs> I mean, he just brushed it off. But I always think about that when I think of parkour, and I'm like, it's harder than it looks, everyone. <laughs> so, yeah. Be that, careful. That... That's so funny that you said that because, like, yeah, when in my first year uh, training that, that that office episode came on, and that just oh, was yeah. like such a <laughs> parkour. For a while, was, yeah, yeah, parkour. <laughs> that was such like a stain on parkour for a minute, just because like you couldn't you couldn't train without like some bros on campus just being like parkour, parkour, and you're just like. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was funny the first time, you know. <laughs> like it's just for, like for me, like I'm I'm six ten, so I'm used to people being like, "Hey, how's the weather up there?" And I'm just like, "It's not funny." And You're not like, like guys. it's not like it's not offensive. I'm not like oh my feelings. No, it's just like it's just so unfunny oh, I that you're it. just like I can't even like. You just like have I'm to use of... use the top of their heads as armrests when they do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm like out of fake laughter at this point. Where I'm just, I just stare at them like, yeah, I'm tall. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. But either way, so like we, we would be training on campus and like people would walk over and be like, oh, oh parkour. And we're like, yeah. And Or they'd be like, oh, I could do that. And I'd be like, cool, do it. Like I didn't say you could. Give it a shot. And then they'd walk over try to impress their friends and then put like their hand on like the wall that we're like vaulting over and then you just see this look in their face like oh <laughs> i have no idea how to use my body and then it's just it was always fun <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah it's much hard. yeah definitely more technical than it appears and like a lot of people want to learn how to jump and flip off things before they learn how to land. Yeah. <laughs> and you should always learn how to land first. That is the first thing you should ever learn in parkour is how to land. Fair. And how to land unexpectedly. Yeah. And how to roll and how to use your hands when you land. Because that way, no matter what happens, you'll be fine. <laughs> right, exactly. So. The eventuality of like you not making it to the part where you need to, you need a plan B. <laughs> land safely. Yeah. Jeez, have you ever have you ever had any injuries? No, no. What? It's funny how many. Yeah, I've been asked that a lot. Um, I believe it. in the last two weeks because everyone's like, "Oh, it's dangerous." I'm like, "Yeah." The uh, well, I mean, like, yeah, I've had bruises and scrapes. Like, you know, I have a few scars on my legs. Like everyone, everyone hits their shins. That's just something we always oh, of tell course. new people. You're gonna hit your shins. You only have to do it once, but you have to do it once. And then once right. you do it, you never have to do it again. But you have to do it once. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, you know, scrapes, bruises, bumps, all that stuff, but I've never broken anything. Um, I mean, maybe, I think I maybe broke my toe once, and even then, like, I don't know if I did, and it's fine. It took, you know, it took, like, two weeks. <laughs> You're like, just, I kept I going, just, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just kept training. Um, but, yeah, like, no, no, no serious injuries. Like, not to say that I haven't seen some. I've definitely seen oh, not not sure. serious injuries. But, um, the, I don't know, the way I, I, I keep saying it is just, like, parkour is like driving a car. You know, it's there are unexpected things that can happen, but for the most part, like the safety level is determined by the driver. Sure. Um, you know, if you want to text and drive at 90 miles an hour, that's all you, <laughs> you know, if you want to, if, if you want, if you want to 10 and two and go five miles under, then that's, you know, that's you too. Um, and so with parkour, like unlike a lot of other extreme sports, we're not 
learning uh, in a trial by fire kind of way. We're learning in like a ladder progression kind of way. Like, oh, I'm going to try this one foot jump. And then, you know, you're like, this is, this feels easy. I'm going to try a two foot jump. And so when you see someone doing like a 15 foot jump, a lot of people think, oh man, that person just went up there and did that jump. But it's like, no, that person's been doing one through 14 feet jumps for the last 10 years, thousands of times, (laughs) you know. Good point. Good point. Yeah, so I've never uh, I've never broken anything. You know. That's crazy. And you didn't do like gymnastics prior to this or anything like that. You just went for it. Just went for it. Yeah, it just wow. basketball. It's my only like basketball and many tag based games as a kid. <laughs> Fair. That's where you, that's yeah. where you get your your improvisational skills with your body. You're like, uh, run this way. Yeah, run, go. Yeah. <laughs> You're go probably really fence. good yeah. at tag now. <laughs> I am now like a much better when I when I was a teenager I I, I couldn't run or I would like fall down. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, I was like extremely uncoordinated. That was actually a big uh reason I wanted to start doing parkour it was uh like when I would see people doing parkour it was less that I was less inspired by like the the flip or the jump. It was more just like man that would be cool to be able to move in such a deliberate way because at the time, like, I mean, I gained so much height so quickly Sure. in my younger days that, like, I, I would hit people in the face um, on accident and just, like, oh, no. hit my head on stuff <laughs> and just oh, no. trip and fall down. I was such a clumsy guy, like, for sure. Um, sure. You know, that when I started doing parkour, people were like, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, that's what I – that's the thing that I wanted out of it was this, like – way to control my body you know and so and i'm really proud to say that i finally have that and i I don't remember the last time i even thought like oh what if i fall or what if i hit this person i just feel in control at all times now and it's it's a nice feeling dude that's a that's a great word actually deliberate because that's exactly how your uh tall trainings videos look every move that you have looks deliberate it's just quick it's amazing because i can't like i said i i can't do it and just to see uh somebody that is so sure-footed you know, you're like, oh, they're going here, they're going there. It's like, oh, cool. It's all like a like a beautifully choreographed scene almost. You know? Oh, thank so you so much. It shows. Thank you. I, I really appreciate hearing that. It's very cool. Dude, it works. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. You ever Thanks, had any man. close calls? You've never injured um, yourself, but have you ever like yes, almost? Yes. <laughs> no, definitely have had um, some close calls. Not like like up top on a building stuff, just like sure. foot slipped while walking on a railing kind of stuff. Oh, um, no. And um, I will say the the coolest thing about those moments is like you can you can the the truest way to judge a parkour athlete is when they're messing up. Um, Good point. Uh, like there's this uh, video by this uh, a German practitioner named uh, Endis uh, Machenko. I couldn't spell his name if I wanted to, but uh, he <laughs> he uh, like somebody in the video like yells out like trust bail mode, and like it's something I really like keep in my head to this day where like the idea is like you know when you're doing stuff in parkour you're 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 kind of trusting this idea that like you've you've established enough um like experience that that when something goes wrong your body's gonna go to that and then like and honestly like it's it's a mode it's a moment you never want to like jump into on purpose sure but after it happens you're always kind of like oh hell yeah like (laughs) feel safe engaged yeah (laughs) like i've had a moment where yeah like my foot slipped and i'm like 10 feet up and the first thing that happened is my body automatically was like arm here foot here hang this grab this and like there wasn't a moment of i didn't panic and just flounder and hit the guy just like immediately knew what position to get into and what to grab for because like it just kind of activates this like primal moment where your your body's like i got this you know like just like an animal like you know like a cat if you see a cat fall yeah like knows how to rearrange its body and like you when you do that and you don't even think about it you're like that was awesome um it's a really really great moment it's honestly one of the things i would sell to people i'm like why parkour why people should take parkour classes. Like Mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, I I never need to do that. And it's like, no one needs to do it. But like (laughs) to have the the assuredness to like, like even sometimes where you're just standing on the sidewalk and like, I'll be like, I'll be standing on like a sidewalk or a bridge or something. And somebody will be like, what if, what if something bad happens? And in my head, I'm like, I never think that. Because I'm just right. like, if something bad happens, I'll figure it out. Now, I might not. Like, you know, like <laughs> I'm not saying that, like, if a truck comes barreling at me, I'll be fine. But, like, <laughs> to have the mindset of, like, to trust, like, okay, I'll, I'll hopefully figure it out. You know, it's it's very reassuring. That's honestly what got me through that entire Predator production, by the way. Like, I could not, really? I could not express that enough. Like, I 
had no idea what I was doing for most of that time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and there were many stunts where they were like, okay, so you're going to learn how to do this. Then I was like, all right. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I, never, can, I can do that. Fine, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> never done that before. Let's give it a shot. Like, and, like <laughs> I'm not even going to say I was confident because I definitely wasn't. I was just like – well, I have to figure this out, so I will. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, was like, it was like resigning myself to just kind of trusting my future self. <laughs> there you go. You're like, I almost yeah. slipped once, and I didn't, so I got this. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's 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 an interesting moment because, um, like, in parkour or or like art in general, like or anything, like it's there's this kind of like, oh, can I do this? I hope so. We'll see. But like when you're when you're working on set. And, you know, each take probably costs $10,000 or more, yeah. you know, um, and then they're like, this is what you're going to do. Like you, like I, like I definitely like erased the part that was like, maybe. And I was just like, no, nope, I'm going to do it. Like, that's right. <laughs> like I'm going to get it because I have to. Um, and that's it might right. take two or three takes, but like, or, or more, you know, obviously, but like, yeah, it's kind of like eliminating that part of that doubt that just like, it's like, what if I can't? Cause you just can't think that yeah i so. totally agree i've always said in certain situations it's easier when you don't have a choice it's like you just gotta yeah. you just gotta do what you gotta do man yeah yeah, yeah absolutely that's cool though. so what would you say is the key to parkour um i'd say key, the key to parkour is knowing why you're doing it oh um, good one yeah that's that i would 100 percent say that and um and i've never said that before it's just like you asked that at a time where i was thinking about it um <laughs> because like a lot of people will, will come in and then leave or or a lot of people will will be training for 10 years and then be like i don't know why i do this anymore and like they don't they won't say that but you can see it you know sure um and i had that i totally had that for for a while i was like i don't know why like i wanted to get really good at um at like different kinds of flips. And I was just like, it was really hard for me mechanically. Um, and then like, I remember finally getting decent at like a few flips and being like, ah, oh, this is okay. But I don't know why I spent so much time working on this when I really wanted to get better at climbing, you know? Right. Um, and so it's like having that why, um, and knowing why you're doing the thing you're doing and for parkour. It's like, there, there's a ton of different you know ways, whether it's like, I just think it looks cool and I want to do it to, you know, I want to be able to, uh, you know, circumnavigate my environment or I want to get stronger because that's going to influence why and how you train um, for sure. And so I think that's like a big deal because I think a lot of people just like, it, it's not, it, it's such a new sport, you know, or discipline. It's even hard to call a sport sometimes. Yeah, um, for sure. And because we don't have like regulated, um, well, you know, we're starting to do more competitions and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of a lot of those, but cool. um like a lot of people will fizzle out because there's not these like moments of test, you know, it's like, like right. for basketball, you, you practice for four days a week and then you have a game on Friday. Right. Mm -hmm. And then like that game tests your ability and then you lose and then you're like, okay, I need to get better at these things. And then in parkour, a lot of people are like, well, I don't like to be competitive, which is why I did it. And like, that's fine. But at the same time, you might not have those moments where you're testing yourself. Right. And then you might just kind of forget like, why am I even doing this? You know? Sure. Yeah makes a lot of sense what so what do you wear what is the best outfit to do parkour in um honestly just anything you'd go for a run in mm -hmm. um so like these days i train mostly in shorts and a tank top if it's hot um you know like a long sleeve under armor kind of thing mm -hmm. if it's warm and then like sweatpants joggers are in style right now but i can't wear those because i'm too tall <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> what kind it of used shoes? to be like, um, decent running shoes that are flexible and not made of like a bajillion rubber pieces at the bottom. <laughs> That's like the biggest thing. Like, like I, I use these new balance Zante shoes that my friend turned me on to because Sweet. they're, they're really comfortable. They're light, they're flexible. But there's one giant piece of rubber on the bottom. Oh. Um, and then also they come in size 16, which is just the most important thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> they have to <laughs> fit first and foremost. <laughs> yeah, they have to fit. Um, but yeah, like anything that you can move well in. Like, and then like, so, but like with the, 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 the predator feet inside the feet was actually a pair of Nike freeze. Um, oh. and so yeah, it was molded around the, the shoe. Really? But, um, 
but I wouldn't do like I, I could move in them great in the predator feed. They were great, but like for like normal parkour use, I wouldn't use those because the bottom is like these like individual square kind of things, and they'll just tear off. Like like you'll 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 pay a hundred dollars for a pair of shoes, and then you'll you'll run up a, a brick wall, and one will just rip off because it's like an Ooh. individual kind of piece, and then you're like, oh, these new shoes I just bought. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you want something that can definitely like take the right amount of wear. Sure. Um, yeah. Man, makes a lot of sense. That's crazy though. I didn't know that. So you you said you started drawing, and then you got into parkour. I'm a massive Avatar fan. Oh, dude, so me too. We have to talk. We have to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, <laughs> when this I, might be the rest of the show, <laughs> dude. I'm down. Yeah. I, I'm a, <laughs> so. When yeah, I saw your portfolio and I saw Ang, I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna be friends." <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I've only like recently tried to start dating again, and like it's one of those things where like when I'm talking to people and they're like, "Oh, I, I love Avatar," I'm like, "Oh, go on," and then like <laughs> and then it's always a good date. <laughs> like that's how much that's how important the show is to me. Like I use I use references. For like Avatar in my everyday life, for like how I'm feeling, like same. same. I know. have two Avatar yeah. posters in my office as we speak. Oh, um, that's awesome! I've got the the Airbender scroll, and I've cool. got the uh, Appa Ang wanted poster. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah uh, so uh, above my above my like shelf in my room is like uh, this artist. Um, I bought them from her at like a convention. It's like all five of the main characters. Oh, it's cool. like right there. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I, I love that show, man. It's just, it's, it's, pro- it's the reason I'm writing and drawing graphic novels because I was so inspired by it that I was like, I want to make something like this. Right. Um, and, and that's kind of, yeah. It's, <laughs> Here it's, <I> so, <laughs> it's so good. I just got turned on to it uh, maybe five, five years ago or so. Cause my, my now wife, she, uh, she grew up on it. And I'd never yeah. seen it. So she's like, you got to watch the show. I was like, all right, cool. So I bought all three books. And I was like, let's just binge it. And yeah, uh, man, so cha- lucky. changed my life, man. <laughs> yes. It's one of those shows. To be able to just binge it. Yeah. It's, it's a great time. Dude, it really I, is. I don't know if you, I don't know if she, sorry, cut you off. Um, no, you're good. I don't, I don't know if she told you the, the like, when, when it was coming out, like after season like two ended, there was just this like year of nothing. <laughs> Dude. And we're all like, is it canceled? <laughs> like, <laughs> freaking out. And then we got like half of season three and then the same thing happened. And everyone's like, they're going to cancel it. They're not, not going to finish it. And we're all like freaking out. <laughs> and then they did. And we're just like so happy about that. Dude, so, incredible. Yeah. Actually, my first cosplay I ever did was the Cabbage Merchant. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. my Actually, my, my podcast logo uh, is a cabbage with headphones on. Yes, because oh, I of that. that. Yep, yep. So I saw I saw your your Ang illustration. I was like, yep, this is this is a talking point. Are you are you, are you excited for the live action series? Or are you hesitant like I, everyone else? I, I think I'm deservedly scared. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> I, um, so yeah, I, I, I had two reactions to it. The the first was, oh man, you know, and, and of course, like one of my friends is like, oh, it's cool. The original creators are going to be a part of it, and I, yeah. you know, I. I I have the greatest amount of faith in, um, you know, DiMartino and Konietzko to Same. to do it right. But Same. I'm just I'm just scared because, of like, <laughs> you know, flashbacks. We, we all remember <laughs> what happened. I'm not gonna even. I remember we, nothing, Brian. <laughs> oh, oh. Like, I, I remember sitting in the theater as the credits were rolling, and I just picked up. I just turned on my phone and my, my friend who at the time lived in Florida mm-hmm. immediately called me and I pick up the phone still sitting in the theater and he goes, what the hell just happened? Like, <laughs> so, so we're in two different theaters in two different states and I just knew like he's going to call me right now. And then we were just and then for four hours, we just were like we, we for four hours, we talked about a 90 minute movie. It yep. was just like what what happened? Yeah. Why did this happen? <laughs> Why was the prison in a canyon? All right. I just, it, I right. Could, how are you gonna have Earthbenders on a mountain? <laughs> <laughs> so my my second reaction to the uh, live action series was I I called my manager and was like, hey, I want to be in that if that's possible. There you go. <laughs> so so I'm putting that out there, like, dude, um, yes, yeah, yes, and yes, and yes, that and would yes. make my life. Um, honestly, I, that would, I I don't think I could be stoked to work on anything else um, more than than to be a part of that. Um, so. That that I I hope maybe comes through. I don't know what they would need a six ten like parkour <laughs> stunt hey, you creature never know. actor we'll predator guy for. But yeah, I would that would be freaking 
honored to be a part of that. Um, but yeah, it's and the other the other thing I feel about it is like I'm I'm I went to school for sequential art, um, um, mm-hmm. and so I wanted to make I wanted to do like pre production animation and like comics. Um, so I, I have a huge love for animation, and so this yeah. this current um, I don't want to say like trend or whatever, but like the current thing of just like let's remake animation as live action i'm i'm not a fan i'm gonna be honest like i'm not and not because i don't think they're as good like it has nothing to do with it i think a lot of them are really good in their own right it's just i feel like we're at this we're, we're i don't know if this is like fair of me to say it, it might be biased but it's just <laughs> i don't like this idea that it counts if it's live action good point. Um, and, good point. and western audiences don't appreciate animation um fair. because yeah eastern audiences do you know, and in, in Japan, Taiwan, they're, uh, Korea, they're oh yeah, like this is just entertainment. But but we have this tendency to be like, oh, it's cartoons, it's for kids, and it's like, no, this cartoon is filled with, you know, philosophical and deep conversation. Oh, but yeah. because you're not allowing your your bias to overlook that, you know, it's it's one, you know, stopping people from enjoying something that they might love, and two, it's 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 hurting the industry because it's it's making it so it's like, oh, we can't sell toys. Girls don't buy toys. Young Justice gets canceled. Still mad about it. Yeah, <laughs> you crazy. Know, it's like, like that's that's absolutely insane that that people still view animation that way. And so that and so that you know that's my little rant because it's like so when I hear about like oh they're remaking this animation as a live action, my film friends are like oh cool more crew and casting work, and I'm like I right. absolutely agree. That is awesome. But I also have a lot of animation friends. You right, know, yeah. I have a lot of you know <laughs> writers that are like oh man that would have been cool to do like somebody right now you know wrote an amazing graphic novel um mm-hmm. that would definitely sell well as an animated tv show um and it's it's not going to happen because people um because audiences haven't been cultivated to appreciate it and that that's uh just it hurts me because i, I just grew up on cartoons i grew up on tom and jerry looney tunes yeah, disney same. anime like everything and and i it's to me it's always just been like a visual it, it's like watching jazz you know it's just oh yeah it's amazing um especially when you know how it's made um and so that's my thing that's that's my like other thing with it is i'm like i'm happy that we're getting this live action you know more avatar is always a better world but at the same time it's like uh, i don't know <laughs> i want more cartoons <laughs> i feel you man i feel you that's yeah. so what what anime are you into um, right now I'm in a bit of a lull. I've been like so busy that I haven't been like keeping up on much, but the, the last two series that I've been really into are My Hero Academia. Ooh, um, nice. and I'm, I'm behind right now. Uh, I, I stopped watching around early season three cause I got just caught up with life. Sure. But the other thing I, I recently binged and, and loved was, uh, the current, like the new Voltron show on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it blew me away cause because my friends, uh, when it first came on, were all like, I think you'd like it a lot. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm, I've never been like a, a Voltron fan um, traditionally. I've always appreciated the original show, but I've never been like a fan of it. Sure. Um, and so I started watching it. And you know, I was like, oh, a lot of CG. That's cool. Um, you know, whatever. And then like I really liked the characters and the character-centric episodes. Like sure. when it was like a, about like the, the, the characters either together or individually. It's like, oh, this is good. And then like season like four happened and i was like what what happened like this got really good and then like five (laughs) and six happened and like this last season i just was like i i tried to watch one episode and i watched like the whole thing um because i was like this is so well paced it's so well written um you know with the exception of like a few things i thought it was perfect um and so, yeah, I, I, which I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say the few things being like the way that they handle Shiro's relationship. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, they already acknowledged that. I don't need to say anything about that. It's just like I like what they were trying to do. I didn't like how it happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the effort. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, close. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, man, I love the show. Um, that one really caught me. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the current things I've been watching. That's awesome. I've been playing catch up. Uh, I I'm on my first watch through of uh, Naruto Shippuden. Nice. I've never seen it, and so that's been an interesting thing. And uh, I, I like that you said it's it's that anime can be a vehicle for like some really serious storytelling that can get you real bad. So it's mm-hmm. I, I'm excited for more people to realize that 
and then like you said not write it off and uh we're in an interesting time so you never know you never yeah you know i I, think we're we're definitely in like a really potential time for for animation for sure excited about it for sure so i hope it's good we'll see how it goes like i said the main creators are like the 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 flag i'm holding on to i was like you know this this is this is hope you know (laughs) this this will this will redeem what happened (laughs) i agree i agree and then you know yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. And as long as they're involved, I feel like it, it can't go too poorly. Or yeah, I yeah, exactly. It. Yeah, <laughs> the margin for <laughs> the margin for error in theory should be less. So yeah. <laughs> we'll know soon. We'll know soon. Uh, it's amazing. So when did you decide to like try your hand at acting and performing? Um, super great question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I. <laughs> I don't think any, I'm not going to say anyone that's, that's <laughs> arrogant, but I, I'll I say know. it. <laughs> I, I, I would challenge that I have and currently experience more imposter syndrome than most people. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how I got here. Um, and, <laughs> and yeah, what, what happened was like, it was back in 2015. Um, wow. But very like, recent. But like, yeah, yeah, very recent. But leading up to that, was uh in, in doing parkour i have a lot of friends that made their way into stunt work and oh. um so i just knew stunt people i was aware of like practices and you know things you need to learn and how like set etiquette um because i hung out with a lot of stunt people and they would just tell me like you don't do that you do this and they say i'm like oh okay good to know sure. and so around 2015 I was like in this moment where like I was doing a bunch of freelance artwork and it just was not like fulfilling me because I wanted to work on my own projects, but I was like spending all my time working on projects for other people that weren't even paying me enough. Um, right. And then I was like, what am I doing right now? You know, it was a very, <laughs> it's a very like, uh, it was just a very trying time mentally. Um, and so I was like, okay, you know, I need to cover my bases first and first foremost. And I think doing a little bit of stunt work would help that. Yeah. And so I just started asking around. I was like, hey, like, um, you know, how do I get into stunt work? And the, the funny thing, it's like a, an inside joke at this point with stunts where, you, like, every day you meet someone who's like, hey, man, how do I get into stunts? Like, they'll text you or <laughs> message you or call you or run into you. Like, how do I get into stunts? And and I guess, like, to anybody listening to this that's one of those people, the only advice I'm going to give on that is ask what you can do and don't ask other people to do stuff for you. Um, there you go. And I'm going to say that about like life because when you go to people like and and you're not assuming that this person has maybe like kids and a full time job and they mm-hmm. also have to do laundry that day and you're just like, <laughs> hey, do something for me. It's like that's incredibly self centered. You know, like that that person has an entire universe of things. Agreed. And and you're just piling it on top of them and that's you know come on. And so and I I really didn't want to be that person. So whenever I would talk to some people, I would be like, hey. You know, I, I did these things. What do you think I should do next? Like, what what one thing do you think I should do? What right. can I do? And then they're like, oh, that takes all the pressure off me. Try this. Talk to this person. Go do this thing. And and then I would do it. Um, and so it was like a few weeks or a few months of just like me doing one more thing kind of every day or every week. Like, oh, I'll put together a resume. I'll get some headshots. I'll, I'll I go. will talk to this person or go train at this place with these people. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, just it, it, it. I lucked out, and a, uh, I was at the the. I was at a gym in Atlanta training, just doing like my thing. And then a, a stunt coordinator was there training other people, and I didn't know he was a stunt coordinator. I just was like doing my thing, sure. and I had I introduced myself because he was like, oh, you know, who are you? What do you do? And then um, and then like yeah, a few days later, he just called me. It was like, hey, I need you for a thing tomorrow, and I was like, oh sweet cool and then i just like that that's what allowed me to get my uh screen actors guild oh uh, sweet and then that just kind of led to, like that 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 became like the that's okay the now door. i can do more of this yeah. but then there was still like i like at that point it was still just like months of nothing right sure um and then uh it, which i still say before that i did three days on a movie but as like a special extra mm-hmm. um but I definitely did stunts. <laughs> like <laughs> a stunt it was extra. one of those things where you're like, should I say something? And other stunt people are like, <laughs> no, just because like don't. And you're like, okay. Um, 
you know, you got the experience and you got the credit. You're like, you're right, you're right. Okay, I won't say anything. Mm-hmm. Um, because even though, like, it's one of those things, situations where you're like, but my rights. And yeah. other people are like, yeah, <laughs> but, like, reality. You know? That's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Like it's gonna, it's gonna be like a little bit of dark humor, but it's like That's what we're right. doing parkour, and the police roll up, and then like, <laughs> like you know, some some privileged kids like, "Fuck you, man! We have rights!" And I'm like, "Hey, <laughs> stop!" Like, <laughs> and like, but they're not allowed. I'm like, I, I doesn't matter. Like, what are you doing? Like, I, I at this point with the ten years of parkour, I basically have like a master's degree in talking to authority and like dissolving <laughs> the situation because it's always me. It's always like they see me. And I'm just like six ten, a foot taller than everybody else, and they're like, "Hey, you, what's going on?" And I'm like, "All right, well, <laughs> I guess I'm in charge <laughs> as your de facto but, uh, leader." <laughs> right, right. So, um, I digress. Um, just the uh, yeah. So, so I did that job, and then I did this one, and then I um, and then I was just kind of doing nothing for a bit, and I would like it. it stunts, stunts is weird. It's it's not very traditional at all. It's it's very much like who you know. Sure. Um, some people like it. Some people advocate it, and I'm, you know, I, I actually am kind of for it because it's 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 a very dangerous um, part of the film world. Oh yeah. And you want to work with people who you trust, and because a lot of people just want money, you know, mm-hmm. they'll come in and be like, "No, I really want to do it." It's like, "No, you want money." Like if you didn't, if this right. didn't pay as well, you wouldn't be here. And I I can say that because in the beginning, I feel like I was the same way. Right. And so. Um, but that being said, it's like, you don't want to hire someone to, to be the person that will potentially save your life. Sure. If all they're thinking about is money. And so, and so a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, it's, 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 it's nepotism and it's who, you know, and it's like, you know, it's, it's a trust network and right. people, people hire who they trust. Um, it's a good and point. I advocate that. It, yeah. It's, it's because, you know, we like accidents happen. Oh, um, for sure. You don't want a new you know, guy running and, the ropes. No, if you don't, and and or or if they are, like you want someone who's like, what do I need to do? How yes. do I have to learn? You know, you want the new guy who like wants to be there. Exactly. Um, and so and, and yeah, and so so that being said, like I you know I would go to the things and talk to the people, but it's like I'm six ten, and so people are like, I don't need you. <laughs> like I appreciate <laughs> that you're here. Like thank you for showing me your stuff. I don't. I couldn't put you anywhere in this movie or this TV show. And I'm like, cool. Like I, I've never taken it personally. It's been like, all right, cool. Like if you need me, I'll be here. If sure. not, whatever. Um, and also, it made like auditions really easy for me because like I've never been to like a big group audition and felt like I was competing because it's just right. Like, Who can if compete? they need me, I'm here. <laughs> like, That's right. Uh, Very specific. Yeah, I'm yeah. the tall, flippy guy. You know, there's like <laughs> there's the other tall bouncer guy, but I'm the tall, flippy, jumpy guy. There you go. Um, it's way better. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so I, um, nothing really happened. And then one day I got a uh, a call to do stuff for Captain America: Civil War. Dude. Um, and that was that was great because uh, it was it was the big uh, it was the Lagos Nigeria scene in the beginning. Oh. And it was so essentially they the way that scene worked was really cool. It was like hundreds of extras. And then, like, a big number of stunt personnel. And so the stunt people, like, when you see the action happening and you see, like, the crowds, essentially the stunt people are buffering oh. the extras. And so, like, if, if something, like, you know, we're, we're doing a mixture of safety and then also just, like, you know, ta- if, if I accidentally get hit in the face by Captain America, like, that's, that's fine. Right. <laughs> because that's my, that's my job. Right. Um, and so it was five days of that, and it was oh, such a good week. It was really fun. Dude. Um, I got to work with some amazing people um, and kind of like watch them do their thing. I take a lot of mental notes. Um, like Guido Savia, he's an amazing yeah. stunt performer. Uh, Aaron Tony, Marvin Aaron Ross. Tony. Yeah, this, uh, um, it was awesome. It was just great being on set with these guys. And so. Um, that was a cool time, and then, and then, and then nothing. Like, and then there was this like big nothing for a while. Um, I was kind of helping this gym in Atlanta. wasn't really doing much with that though. Um, and then near the end of the year, I got I did one day on Walking Dead, and I got really? shot in the face. Yeah. What? <laughs> it was like season six, episode fourteen, I think. No way. Um, yeah, when they're like they're like on the railroad and the dude bites the other dude in the dick. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then like the the walkers come out and I'm I'm like I walk up 
and like he just like shoots me in the head. Dude. Um, and that was fun. It was like it was a really small bit, but it was a really fun day. Like it was just like I got to do the makeup and I got to like hang out the other zombies and Wow. Um and it was one of those signs it's it's funny how doing stunts, like you might do something huge or you might do something small where you're like Right. Oh, you know, this you know, the the actor we don't want the actor to trip and fall, so we're gonna have you trip and fall. Right. Um, and then you, like, you know, it's it's a good day, honestly. Um, but then, like, there's always this part where, like, some people they got their prides so and they're like, "Oh man, I can do more." <laughs> you know? Right. But um, <laughs> but for me, it was like a mix of both. It was great because it was like the only thing I was doing was really getting shot and falling down. But I was falling down on rocks, and Ooh. so I, I had like all my pads on, and they were like, oh, "Are you good?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm prepared." And so like, it felt really like I did my thing. I did my job. Yeah, you're but, a um, professional. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a professional. Ah, and so that was that was cool. Um, and then yeah, and then nothing really after that. Um, and so I ended up moving to Seattle shortly after that because I just really wanted to do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went and worked with uh, Parkour Visions, which is a a gym um, and yeah, parkour teaching organization nonprofit uh, that operates out of Seattle, Washington, and um, they. Uh, yeah, I was working like their front desk for a while, and that was that was fun. I got to like be a part of the community, try something new. Sure. Had had its had its ups and downs, not from like the job standpoint, but mostly just from like the, uh, you know, life transition. What am I doing with oh, yeah. my life? Kind of <laughs> it's a very, very um, big move. <laughs> right. We we all feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm still honestly, I'm still there. Um, sure. It's just like this I believe was, it. Like the a lot more. It was a lot harder at the time, um, and so. I was doing that for months, and then, um, uh, yeah, around July, I just got a phone call from Lance Gilbert, who was the second unit director and stunt coordinator for Predator, and he just called me and was like, are you are you really 6'10 and do part four? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, who, who's this? <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I sent him my information, and uh, he called me back shortly, and then they sent me to L.A. a week later uh, for the audition, and with four other guys who had been trying to get the audition for like months. Really? Um, so, so I was told. Um, sure. Uh, and so I was like, I'm just, I just got here. Sure. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. And so it was at a parkour gym in LA. Oh, sweet. Uh, and so I was like, I'd always wanted to go here. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Tempest for running Academy. And I was like, yeah, I always wanted to visit this place. So this, this trip's a win-win. Yeah. Um, and there was like, lit- like I literally had zero intent, like not intention. I had zero expectation to get that this job sure. like zero and not not in a negative way like not like a oh i couldn't no i just was like no that's not how things work <laughs> like, right <laughs> i'm not gonna show up like not even knowing about this and then in a week later get it like that's not right and so i i just like <laughs> i i think that really helped me because instead of being nervous i was just like i'm gonna have fun i'm gonna do my thing definitely i'm gonna like do what i can and then like just take from the experience yeah, that mindset um, goes a then, long way for auditions. If you show really up, does. if you show up desperate, then they're like, mm, "I feel like he can't contribute." We would be giving him something. But if you show up and you're like, "What's up, man? This is what I can do." It's more of a contribution, and uh, yeah, I feel like that's the way to go. Yeah, I totally it agree. Works. <laughs> yeah, ironically, I'd say the same thing about dating. But <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> it's just, you know, you don't want to be the needy person. <laughs> this is true. It's very true. You know? But you don't want to be uninterested either. <laughs> That's right. We got to find that balance. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so then they called me the next day, and I was watching Star Trek Beyond with my friend in LA. And then I get like a phone call in the middle of the movie. And I'd left the theater, and they were like, Yeah, we want you to play the Predator. And I was like, Are you serious? <laughs> like, um, and I was, I was stoked about it, man. Um, Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. And so then from that point, it was like a bunch of fittings and moldings and costume tests and then six months of waiting because the movie kept getting pushed back. Sure. Um, which came with a lot of mental struggle because you're like, is it canceled? I already quit my job. Like, Oh, yeah. You know, like, I, are they sure they want me for this? <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's the worst um, part. You can't schedule yeah. anything just in case. You're in that oh, weird man. limbo. Yep. And I was super afraid of getting hurt because like – Oh right! You don't want to I, I, I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing parkour all the time, and at the time I was really pushing my limits on stuff. And then they were like, "Okay, don't get hurt indefinitely," and you're like, "Awesome!" Uh, and so <laughs> I just was like, I was like, but I still needed to train because like if I don't train, then like that's like my primary right. exercise. Um, 
So I just had to like train a lot more responsibly. Um, and it wasn't even the parkour that like felt the most stressful. It was everything else. Like, <laughs> like at that point when I, I was like, if I was the passenger in a car with somebody, I was like, get off your phone. <laughs> like you know like i was the guy that was now afraid of getting hurt all the time because i just didn't want to like lose this opportunity sure um but yeah then it like it you know I, I it came back around um you know they finally called me and were like hey you know we're gonna fly you back out to vancouver um and then we started filming dude and, yeah that's big that's real big yeah it that's was a, huge it's that's, that's a big that's a big time franchise as well the predator dude that's old yeah. school character Man, that's crazy. That also proves I've heard that a lot of principal casting, regardless of where they film, is actually out of L.A. So that makes a lot of oh, sense yeah. that they flew like you to L.A. to audition. Very interesting. Dude. Yeah. So no, for what, sure. So how was that? Uh, you know what? I actually have had on the previous Predator on my show before. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was a yeah. guy named Ian White. It- Ian White, yeah. Yeah, great dude. Uh, I heard a lot about him. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, the one in AVP and Requiem. Yeah, so, uh, that's cool. So I got to ask you, how is that suit? Uh, it is a, like, it, it's, it's a crazy mix of awesome and terrible. Um, <laughs> like, it's, like, it, as, a, as an ergonomic thing, it's, it's awful. Um, mm-hmm. But as, like, a, as, like, a, a suit, you know, as, like, a, as a, as something extrinsic, it's the coolest thing in the world. Um, sure. It, tra- it changes your physiology, you know, like, like I put on the suit and then suddenly I have this like gigantic chest and huge muscles <laughs> and I'm like, and I feel taller, you know, and sure. then I'm like, I have scales and claws. And then like when the head goes on, you just walk out of the tent that they dress you in. And then everyone like freaks out when they see you. Oh, sure. Like, no, no one's like, oh, cool, whatever. Everyone, everyone was always like, oh, my God. Like, whenever they see you, it's always just like, oh, look, look, there's that's the predator. Oh, man, look. And then, like, you – like, I just would push into it. I would just be like, instead of trying to do a thing, I was just like, I see what the people I, – I can see what they want from, right. from me, and I'm just going to give them that. And then it was like – like, that was me learning how to do it, essentially. Um, I had sure. a lot of – movement practice from my friend Kyle, Kyle Strauss. He oh, cool. played one of the other, he played the other emissary predator. I yeah. played one of the emissary predators as well. They were cut out of the movie. Um, I could go into that. <laughs> but <and> so <laughs> me, me and Kyle did a lot of like creature work together and he's a dancer. Cool. And he's like a, a pre- professional popper. And so he's like really good at movement and stuff. And so he would like help me just like, we think about like hands and breathing and eye work and walking and running and all this cool stuff. Um, and the stunt team as well it gave me a huge amount of training for everything. Um, and then and Boyd Holbrook actually gave me a bunch of breathing exercises to do. Oh, sweet! Um, and that was really cool of them. Um, and uh, and so yeah, but the the but the, the hard parts of the suit were just like it's heavy. It's a giant glove, so the moment it goes on, the only place air is escaping is out of my neck. But oh, the moment man. the head the moment the head goes on air isn't escaping <laughs> oh, no. so it just heats up <laughs> immediately like it's it is a, a it is a time game you know it is just you being like how how long can i be how long can i do this sure. before i i can't and and a lot of and like the, the biggest difficulty was just conveying that um because you know you're on set everyone's like go 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 move 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 sure cut action cut action and then you're like Hey, I'm dying. Um, <laughs> and, and I think, you know, people are kind of used to, like, complaining on set, I guess. Um, sure. At least that's what it felt like. So, like, <laughs> you know, very, very quickly, like, we had to establish these, like, these, like, talks of, like, hey, I'm not complaining. Like, if I'm, if I'm saying I'm hot, I need you to listen to me because I don't want to pass out again. Right, <laughs> right. You know? And, um things like that you know like i i could i could twist my arm and then well i could i could have a a spout of sweat fall to the floor um oh, man. you know i i couldn't see if i was wearing the battle mask like it looks cool but like you can't see worth shit out of it um, really? and then yeah oh yeah 100 percent, 100 like it, it like there's these two tiny goggles that are like like cheek level so you're looking down through oh, them no. so you can't see straight that's why sometimes my head would like look like it was a little tilted up. If, like and like that was one of the things I wish I had gotten to see more 
uh-huh. what do you call it? Playback on because I would have I would have corrected that earlier. Um, so a lot of times my head felt like it was way too high because that was maybe the only way I could see. Um, wow. And then like and then whenever we were outside and then inside over time, but outside immediately the goggles would fog up. Oh, of course. Um, and so you just like it. It looked like a mirror after a hot shower. I was just like, okay, well, I can't see. <laughs> um, so there was a lot of me like having to just time or like practice motions, and then just like like have faith that everyone was going to be in the place that they were supposed to be when it was going <laughs> to happen. Um, and right. and it, it worked out, you know, because I was working with professionals. Um, sure. And uh, but yeah, so like you know, from mobility to weight to <laughs> visibility <laughs> to temperature it was just all really hard and then on top of that they're like look badass and then run 50 yards <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it was just like oh dude it was a it was a test like i came out of that thing stronger physically and mentally um i believe it so yeah like that's that's kind of that that's that you know and it's funny because like i i don't think a lot of people like to hear that uh, <laughs> they'll like, they'll be like how awesome is wearing that suit and you're like oh it's like the worst thing ever but i loved it and i would do it again tomorrow if you asked me to do it and that's like, the what? Truth. like yeah oh 100 100 like it's it's the worst thing ever but like the positives like outweigh the negatives right by like only a few bullet points <laughs> but those bullet points are in like like bolded font that are like huge, you know, like it's just so cool to wear. It's like, it's like cosplayers, like professional cosplayers. Like if you ever yeah. hang out with someone who does cosplay, they're like, they need a, a friend or oh, yeah. you know, a boyfriend or a girlfriend <laughs> to have them handle. And, and they're just stressing out the whole time and doing their best, but then they still do it because they're like, no, it's like, there's, there's no cooler feeling than being that character that other people see and exactly. I'm just like, yo, that's so awesome. And you're like, oh man, that's great. Like I get to, I get to do that for people. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I totally, I would do it again in a second. Like, like my favorite day this year was uh, April, I can't remember, 6th or 8th or something where we, they flew me to LA to do a bunch of, um, it was a one day like promotional shoot where we shot a lot of the clips that you'd see in the, like the Twitter and the Instagram. Oh, sweet. Uh, 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 trailers that they ended up releasing yeah. very close to release. And that was like, oh, it was such a fun day because I was like, I wanted I, I wanted to do more stuff in the suit. And I was thinking, I was like, oh, man, and, you, know, I, you know, hope they would call me back to do a thing. And they're like, hey, can you do like one day? And I was like, yes, I absolutely can do that. Um, sure. It was just a great day. And I got, to have, I got to have a lot of fun with it because like in the original filming, like I had I had fun but not as much fun as i wish i did because because i was more worried about just like fucking it up you know which was sure sounds negative but it's it's true it's just it's like a you lot know, of it's, pressure it's it's a lot of pressure it's mm-hmm. like so much and um and it was always kind of like frustrating when people would be like what are you stressed about and i'm like what do you think <laughs> like, like i, I don't know i'm the be... predator <laughs> yeah i'm the predator and like i want to do this well you know like i am i am stoked to do this but like, I don't want to fuck it up. You know, I sure. want to make sure I can like, I I want to I want to perform in a way that people remember fondly. You know, and right. that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure. And so, and it was me figuring it out every day. And so, like going back into it, it was just like, okay, I already know, I already know how to do it now. Um, now I get to just enjoy doing it. Now I get to like try more things. Now I get to like experiment and and play. Um, and at the same time, I have more like knowledge to be like. Hey, I need a break, and they're like, "But no, I need a break now." <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like I, I know now where my limits are. Sure, um, learn that so the hard yeah, way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah, so um, man, I love that suit. It did, was such a trip to wear. Did they have to do like a body mold of you, or was it they just found, needed someone who fit the suit? Yeah, there was a body mold. Like I'm the only person Dude. that can wear that suit. What was that like? Like, oh, I was nuts. Um, I did a hand mold, foot mold, a head mold. The head mold was like 30 minutes of just like only breathing through my nose. Oh man. But it was like the day after they told me I got the part. So I was just stoked. You know, I I, got in the high. (laughs) Yeah. Like they pulled me out of it and they were like, wow, we don't usually see people smiling when they come out of that. And I was like, dude, um, I get to be the predator. Why would I be upset at all? Um, (laughs) um, I got that reaction a lot from everyone on like crew and stuff like that throughout the entire process. Like you're really nice. And I was like, I'm just treating people with respect. Like I don't. (laughs) I don't, I'm not trying to be nice. And then you kind of wonder like, oh, how, how do people normally act? In this yeah, exactly. I don't know. 
we just um, said hi and they were like wow <laughs> yeah like that would happen and i'm like oh okay but um but yeah, so the, the body mold is hard because I had to stand there for like 45 minutes. And then like as soon as the plaster starts hardening, mm-hmm. then you start like, oh, I can't really breathe. Um, oh, no. Or like I can't. You, know, you start getting hot. Um, sure. But, you know, we did it. It, it wasn't it wasn't terrible. It was just tough. But um, yes, yeah, so cool. the, molding, the molding was fun. Sure. Uh, ADI, the studio that made the suit, they're, they're so cool. Um, like going in there was always fun because they have a bunch of stuff from like – from a- AVP and other movies that you can just like look at. It's like a museum. What? Super cool. And then um and then the workshop's great to watch all the artists like doing their thing and like watching them like sculpting and like that was awesome. Um and then uh yeah and then Quantum was the studio that did the suit. Uh well, it did like the armor. Yeah, you know, the sure. armor and the mask and then their their stuff is also equally really cool to see. Um and so yeah, those two things together were just like kind of amazing to put on. That's so cool. So the the head itself, I'm assuming there's there's got to be some sort of mechanics animatronics in the mouth because the teeth. Yeah, you, you put that on, and then is that your eyes coming through? Those are my eyes. Yeah, wow. those are my eyes with with the giant contacts on. Um, Dude. And uh, yeah, the three of the puppeteers from ADI would control the head. Um. And cool. uh, they would control like one one did the eyebrows, one did the mandibles, and one did the uh, the jaw. And then um, all of the servos were in the back of the head, like right behind my skull. Oh, and so and so it was kind of like ten pounds right there that was just pulling your head down. Sure. Um. So a lot of it was like you fighting to hold your head up. Um. Wow. And then and then also when, as soon as those servos go on, you can't hear anything. All you hear is grinding, like grinding in your ears. Sure. And um, and that was that was crazy. So like they would they would go on, and then you know people would be like, "Oh, Brian, do this," and I'm like, "I can't hear you." <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, yeah, like I it's like I, okay, this time I can see, but I can't hear. You know? Sure. Always yeah, something. With, yeah, it's always something. Like that's that's the nuttiest thing about like wearing that suit is it's it is always a sensory challenge. Sure. Um, and you got to run. And then also. <laughs> Yeah, and then you have to run. I, oh, the physical stuff. Anytime wearing the harness was the worst thing ever. Um, like because normally with a stunt harness, mm-hmm. like you you zip it up before the take, and then you know rigging will hook you up to the to the vest, and then you'll do a few takes on like the ratchet or the wire pull that they're doing, and then you know then they say cut, and then you can like loosen it up. But um, with this with the predator suit, it's you pull it as tight as possible, and then you put all of the suit on, and then you just stay oh. in the harness for hours, and it hurts, oh, and like man. you can barely breathe, and it like it it, it makes you want to like curl forward, but the character is very chest up, so you're fighting like the harness the whole time, and like those days were my most like those are the hardest days for me to stay uh, cool, um, because like sure. You know, because I'm a human being. And so yeah. I, I was very just like, I'd get irritated and agitated, but then try to be like, okay, no, yeah, let's do this. Right, let's do this thing. Um, and those were days I was really thankful for my, my costuming team. Um, sure. Because we had, a, we had a whole team of like people. It was like Heather, Taryn, Mike, and a handful of other uh, artists that would come in and out too. Um, and those guys just like would do a lot of like, like kind of triage work for me um especially mike fields he would just like he would he would get like the right amount of angry for me <laughs> <laughs> so he would like he would like kind of go off on people sometimes and be like hey man like w- what's going on with this and they're like chill he's like no he's wearing this thing and it hurts like you guys gotta like give him a break and like that's Good always man. really cool um and so yeah that was great um because i definitely needed it uh but yeah, like, yeah, the harness is really hard. And then days without the harness felt like vacation, honestly. <laughs> when I got to just like not wear it, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Sure. Um, but yeah, the physical stuff was really, really hard. Um, like the, that lab scene was like two days of shooting. Well, it was three days, three or four days of actual shooting, but like two days of my stuff. Sure. Um, and each of those days, Mike had to glue the head to the body because, uh, because he wasn't wearing the shirt. And so oh. I was I was locked in the head for like six and a half hours Yee. at a time, um, and you just you just go to a happy place and then like <laughs> and it was the talking head too, so it was the heavy one. So I'm like I'm, I'm engaging my neck and then I'm holding the rest of the suit, 
And then I have to like swing at this person and throw her over here and then hit this guy, you know? Yeah. And, and you got to like take after take after take after take. And uh, that was hard. That was like super difficult, but I knew it was going to be extremely worth it because it was just such a fun scene. Like oh, yeah. there's so many moving pieces. Like I can't give enough props to the stunt team that they had because everybody was just doing their thing so well. Um yeah, it worked. Awesome. It was a great scene. You were, yeah. you were brutal. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I was very happy to watch that. <laughs> There's a part where where uh, you uh, the predator bites the guy next to him. I was like, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how has this not been utilized more? That's yes, like that hardcore, was hardcore man. <laughs> thanks, dude. That's pretty. Yeah, cool. that was that was a great time. And then um, the parts after that were really fun. Um, I loved like one of my personal favorite moments was the uh when i whipped the gun into the glass case oh yeah because it was the like props was like yeah the whole thing should just shatter and then you can just (laughs) and then you can just grab the mask i was okay and then i whipped the gun and then it didn't shatter like only the part where the gun went through broke and i was like oh and so i was still in character i just walked up and then punched the glass yeah and that was that was that's completely improv because i was like all right well the thing didn't break and then i pulled the mask out yeah and then I pulled the mask out, and then they're like, cut. And then, like, the first lady was like, awesome. I'm so glad you did that. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, it didn't, it didn't break. And I was, you know, what else am I going to do? That's right. Uh, and so that was, that was like, one of my favorite scenes to see. I was like, yeah. I, no one told me to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a um, real moment. Yeah, that was a real moment. <laughs> you were in it. That's so cool. It's interesting to hear yeah. the techniques, because I've had quite a few creature performers on that have done all the new Star Wars movies. And oh, cool. I'm like, I'm fascinated with aliens. That's always been like my thing. And yeah. I'm very interested in the process of things. So to hear that, like the way that they made the predator is almost exact to the way that they make all the star Wars aliens as well. There's fittings, there's a mech inside of the head and uh, visibility and the different things that these performers such as yourself have to overcome. Uh, makes me appreciate the performance even more. Pretty cool. Awesome. No, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah, yeah and, and same for me. Like, after doing it, now when I see people in suits, I'm like, oh, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> been there. You know? <laughs> yeah, been there. Um, especially when you see them for, like, a short time on camera, because, like, I, I know that they were at least there for a day or two, you mm-hmm. know, in, in, in that thing the entire time. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Whew. All that stuff. <laughs> and then, and then the, the running was like my also, also my favorite. Cause uh, we did a lot of like wire slinging. Like I was getting thrown across like that whole fight with the, uh, the Big assassin. Yeah. <laughs> like he, like when he like throws me and like, I like hit the ground and launched towards the, the camera. That was just like a huge wire pull. Really? And that was hard. Yeah. That was, that was nuts. Um, and then, um, but then like when I did the running, um, that was, that was like the first time, trying to figure out how to word it. That was like one of the first times I really was like, um, like, uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Just like kind of praised for, for the things I was doing. Oh, like cool. it's, not that, it's not that I wasn't before. It's just very much like, okay, cut, moving on, cut, moving on. Sure. So I was very much like, is this good? Like, do people like it? Right. Um, and then I did the running and I don't know what it was, but we did the running and people were like, shit, man, like you were hauling ass. And I was like, oh, <laughs> That's like the one thing I knew how to do before I came in here <laughs> was run. So I'm going to run. And, uh, and that was great to see on camera. And I got a lot of like comments and messages about that that were really touching where people were like, yo, you were moving really fast. And I was like, awesome. You Thank were. You. <laughs> you were. That was really hard. <laughs> like every time they yelled cut, I was pretty much ripping the mask off and then like fighting for air because like I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't breathe through the mask. So sure. it was just this like... Yeah, it was tough, <laughs> but I, you know, I loved it. So it was just like, I knew, I knew it was going to look good. Um, so sure. Yeah, I was stoked about those running scenes. That's so cool. Yeah. So how do you, when you're doing like, you're in this predator suit and when you're doing these big fight scenes and whatnot, how are you rolling and getting thrown all without the head coming off and stuff? Um, yeah, it's just like, it's like locked on. Um, gotcha. like it's like, there's this like clamshell that like is fitted to my head. And then they would like uh. tighten that, and then that was like attached to the rest of it. Um, so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't going anywhere. There was like a chin strap too, like it was like a mini football helmet. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, it definitely was like not coming off. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> there there were a few like prop malfunctions where like like a, a, like a gauntlet would fly off, or like the mask would like barn door open sometimes. But oh no, 
luckily they never it was never a huge issue like if it did happen like luckily a lot of times like i that that part wasn't on camera um yeah like my my i think my favorite son in the film is one of the smallest ones i think on camera was like when when the loonies first see me from the bus oh yeah and like that 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 guy that guy hits the ground but then they look up and they see me jump down yeah like that was 100 percent me just taking that drop Really? Um, yeah, like onto like a, a small panel mat. Wow. Um, and then like I'm wearing this like, you know, 70 pound suit or whatever. And they're like, OK, we need you to jump from up here to down here. And I'm like, all right. Uh, <laughs> I was definitely like a little freaked out, but I was like, nah, I can do that. And so then like I did it and it took like two tries to get it. But yeah, like stomped out the landing and then walked out. But like when I stomped it out, I'm pretty sure like the, the part of my gauntlet like just like it's like flew off. But you can't see it. So it was like <laughs> one of those things that they, they definitely did a good job teaching me of like if something goes wrong like that, ignore it and keep going. That's right. Until someone yells cut because don't break. Yeah. Like parkour people have a bad habit of being overly perfectionist with their like with their parkour lines and stuff like that. And so right. like if one little thing goes wrong, they'll be like, Nope, stop, let's do it again. And that's a it's a huge detriment to being a performer because you know, you're going to think, oh, man, my foot was an inch off. I'm going to stop. And it's like, no, you're one of 18 moving pieces right now. Right, like, right. Like, chances are no one noticed but you. And then also, even if they did, just, like, keep going. <laughs> that's right. That's and right. So that took me a, a while to, to adjust to. Um, and then since then, it's helped because you learn, you learn a lot more when you just power through things and if you just stopped and restarted them. Absolutely. And I think you would probably get more confidence as well to just, it's one of those like finished, not perfect kind of mentalities, you know, like just keep on rolling. And then if something's wrong, we'll go back and fix it, but don't ruin your own take by acknowledging the thing that went wrong. It's like, uh, I don't remember the artist. Uh, it might've, you know, it might've been Prince where it was like, if he made a mistake in a song, he would make it again right after on purpose to make it seem like he meant to do it the first time and then carry yeah. on with the song. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, cool. perfect is the enemy of finished. <laughs> yeah, for real. That's a rough one. <laughs> Any artist can relate to that. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's so cool. Can you believe we've been talking for over an hour already? No, no, I can't. This has been great. <laughs> yes, that's what I like to hear. Also, you have a great name. So, oh, gotta, thank you. Got to throw that one out. And you spelled it correctly, so well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I always tell people. It's like Brian with an I spelled correctly. Those yeah, credit crazy. goes to my parents on that. So. That's right. Mine too. <laughs> but uh, So, uh, you know, I hope you've had a good time, man. This has been really, really fun for me. Well, I'm uh, glad. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time because, uh, you know, you didn't have to. <laughs> and, um, so where <laughs> where can people find you online? Um, I have a few places that I'm trying to figure out what to do with. Um, the <laughs> main, main one's my website, which is just thebaprince.com. So yeah. T-H-E-B-A-P-R-I-N-C. Uh, dot com and from there you can link to like my, my social medias i primarily use instagram mm-hmm. um i have two instagrams and my my friends that are like big time instagram people are really mad at me because they're like you need to get better <laughs> at learning how to use social media and i'm like i just don't i don't like it like Same. i don't like, i like i like throwing stuff up there i don't i don't like playing the game as much like i respect people who like that's their primary thing but it's, mm-hmm. it's not my primary thing Same. and it's just and like i if I'm on my phone too much, I'm not a happy person, um, right. but I'll stay on my phone. So, but that being <laughs> said, so it's like Instagram, so the BA prints for just like art and like the six predator posts I've put on there. I, I will post more in the future. I'm just like <laughs> figuring out what to do with it. And then um, tall trainings is yes. my Instagram for parkour. That one I'm fairly consistent with. Cause like if I train, I will post a clip. Um, and then um, Twitter, the BA prints as well on Twitter. Um, I have a Facebook, a professional Facebook page. I I have not touched it. Um, I want to do something with it. But uh, I I honestly am just like, I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm just like not huge into Facebook right now. I'm like kind of dying down my like dialing, dialing back my my Facebook usage. Um, And uh, all I will say is please don't friend me on Facebook because I will not accept a request. (laughs) And that is, do not take that personally. There's like 115 requests in my in my box right now and i just was like i'm not looking at any of them i'm not looking at any of them and like i have 
family friends are like, why haven't you friended me on Facebook? And I'm like, because I haven't checked. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. Like, <laughs> like you're gonna you're gonna get more things and that's the funniest thing is like no one follows me on twitter i have like <laughs> maybe 200 followers or something and because of that like predator fans have like asked me stuff on twitter and i'll answer anything right like, i will i have i have answered like questions i just told you sure. on twitter to just individual people and mm-hmm. then yet and, and yet people are trying to friend me on facebook for no reason and i'm like just, just... <laughs> Like there's or, nothing or write, there. <laughs> yeah, or write me an email. Like, <laughs> like everything is better than like friending me on Facebook and sending me a Facebook friend, a message. Like that, I, I, I can't explain how frustrating it is when like <laughs> I, I have like forty or fifty Facebook and Instagram like on like message requests, Ooh, and boy. it's just it's just too much. It's too much for me to like get. I, I love everyone that message I really appreciate it. I I can't say that enough. But the ironic part is that if someone commented, I will comment back. Right. (laughs) But if you send me a message, I can't check it because it's, it's, it's gotten past the point of being able to check it. And then I've noticed like when I do try to interact with people on messages, you know, they will keep going. Right. Um, And then, and then I, I just, I'm like, Hey, I'm like, I'm on the train right now, or I'm hanging out with my, my dad right now. Like I can't, that's right. I can't keep this conversation going. Like this isn't. I'm not sitting in a room just talking to you. Sure. Um, and then also like, it's just, I don't know. It's a whole thing. But like, so when like when because you sent me like an email, right? I did. And like I, I, I cannot express how appreciative I am <laughs> of you sending me an email because like I, I, I got an email I think the other day. If someone was like, hey, I've been trying to get in contact with you for weeks. I sent you a Facebook message. I'm like, why did you do that? <laughs> Why did you – who does that? Send me an email. <laughs> like that is the least professional way to talk to somebody True. because your your message gets either thrown into an inbox that I don't even know how to access sometimes <laughs> or it gets lost between, oh, man, you know, that last episode was really good and, oh, do you want to grab lunch? Like it, your your important message is now lost right. in, in that, you know. So send me an email. Sorry for that like last-minute rant. I just like – I want people to know. Please That's right. Stop do. Please stop trying to contact me on Facebook. <laughs> Please stop because I will not get to it. Send me an email or follow me on Twitter or Instagram and I will love you forever. And then comment on stuff and I'll comment back at you because that I can do. There you um, go. That's the real yeah. reason I brought you on was for that PSA. Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I wanted you to be able to get your message out. <laughs> you can tell I'm feeling it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But, so This was really fun. Thanks again, man. And... Yeah, dude. Thank you so much. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share and tell your friends. Let them know we got some cool stuff going on over here. Also, uh, I've finally broken down and made a Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, Special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, and Daryl. Your support means everything, and I cannot tell you guys how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.